start in about five minutes, but um, I have from Dorothy, uh, is gonna show some sketches. Ken says he's got some photos. Uh, can we count on you, Chris Gaynor, for an update? Actually, I have a, uh, an update, and I also have uh, an update on the uh, uh, mailing of calendars situation, too. Okay. <laughs> I was just at a board meeting, and we got a report on that. Uh, so, on that um, has anybody gotten an observer's handbook yet? I I've, got, I've got mine. I've got mine. I got mine. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah, a couple of days ago. Yeah, it was a courier. Uh, what was it? Was it FedEx or something? Uh, or uh, it was something odd. Or it was know, it was DHL actually. Yeah, uh, it was a courier because my wife came in. And says somebody dropped this on the front steps. So, <laughs> Bill, are you able to talk about the comment occultation? Is Bill there? <laughs> He's also he observing. <laughs> I'm yeah. setting up my telescope right now. Excellent. <laughs> there he is. I'm setting up my big one. Nice. So it overpower the moon. It won't occult for here, though. No, it's only the Northern Island. Yeah. Like, it, it's right, quite, it's right quite on a long the, way north. <laughs> it's right on the edge of the path. It's not near the center line. Most most of the guys in Edmonton Victoria's are Victoria's just about... slightly south of the possible edge of it. It's like that's what I see by looking at that map. I'm just yeah, curious. Really yeah, the Edmonton guys are headed about halfway from Edmonton to Jasper, I think. Yeah. It won't really matter. There's the moon. There is you indeed gotta, the moon. I'm I'm right beside my garage, so that the um Garage will block the moon when it's up. So I won't have to deal with that. Because that's what I could see. Last. The star that it's right beside is really easy to see. You can just look up and figure out that, oh, yeah, it's that one. Because it's just a little fainter than fifth May. I walked right out of the house last night and just could figure out right away. Like, I could see it without any dark adaptation. Cool. Oh, good. There's Dorothy. Yeah, speaking of full moon, there was a really high tide in Cadboro Bay yesterday. You couldn't walk the beach at all because it was right up to the seawall. Floating all the logs away. <laughs> or redistributing them along the beach, I should say. Yeah. And there was a flock of about 15 mergansers out there today. Well, my dear Astro friends, uh, welcome to the last Astro Cafe of the year. And uh, my big hope is that we can get everybody to talk about some aspect of their uh, astronomical year whether it's a book or an observation, a piece of equipment, uh, an interesting article, um, anything. But I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we can go around the whole table and just uh, get a feel of what 2021 was. But we do have a few uh, people who have uh, things and we're going to have uh, Dorothy talk about sketches and Ken had some pictures. This is kind of in the nature of the, um, you know, what did you do this year? Um, Chris and yeah, so, so Chris, why don't we start with you? Which Chris are you talking about? Oh, Gainer, Gainer, Gainer. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was looking right at you. 
Sorry, I was doing I was multitasking a little bit here. Okay. Um, let's see, nothing new to say in Hubble. And uh, so we're just waiting for uh, the big launch of uh, James Webb at uh, 4.20 a.m. Uh, on uh, Friday morning. And uh, so the rocket is on, the, uh, the rocket has the uh, shroud on top with the uh, James Webb inside. And uh, so, and things seem to be ready to go. And uh, December 24th is kind of an interesting day for the Ariane. The very first Ariane rocket flew on December 24th. 1979, I believe it was, and and, uh, and uh, that was a successful flight, and so that's a bit of a good omen, uh, but I guess we're just going to have to see how it goes, and we'll have the uh, the month of, uh, of uh, tension, or whatever you want to call it, so uh, while uh, Webb makes its way up. Uh, and to just hope it's not uh, cut short, and uh, and on the the it will be on uh, NASA TV, uh, and uh, which which can be streamed. Uh, you can get it off of YouTube, um, and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. And uh, the NASA web uh, uh, website, of course, is. Uh, Got lots of resources as we've talked about in previous weeks. So I think that's what I'll say about web, and we just hope, hope like hell it uh, it works. And of course, there's if you cruise around the internet right now, there's a lot of articles uh, about web, and uh, so there's uh, there's lots to uh, to uh, look for about that. Just something else I will mention is that uh, probably a lot of you noticed that the uh, Parker solar probe, um, uh, the scientists have concluded that uh, when it uh, made a close passage to the sun this summer, that it actually did come into contact with the outer reaches of the, uh, of the, of the sun and uh, they're publishing some of the data from that. And I think it's, making another close passage to the sun soon. So that's kind of a his, historic uh, historic event. And NASA uh, put out about a five minute film on, uh, on Parker and, and what it found. And I, especially those, those of you who really uh, like looking at the sun, I would highly suggest you look for that. I put it up, uh, it's, on the, it's on the NASA website, of course. Uh, I put it up on the uh, RESC group on uh, on Facebook too uh, a couple of days ago, but it's 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 really it's really a great uh, uh, a great film. So uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, some of the more uh, down to earth uh, things here. Uh, so yes, uh, a couple of hours ago I was at a at our December meeting of the RESC board of directors. And, uh, and we got a report from, uh, from Bill uh, Groff, our executive director. Um, first thing I'll say is, is, is that we kind of had a, and I know you're tired of hearing this perfect storm of problems. We have the uh, supply chain stuff that comes with COVID, but uh, within the RESC, the office moved uh, late last week to a new location, kind of more central in Toronto than the uh, office in recent years. The, the, the one, uh, uh, the old office uh, was out in Etobicoke, and uh, this one is over in College Street. Now, some of the real old timers might remember that until the 70s, uh, some of the uh, the uh, office had been on College Street uh, for many years, but now it's back on College Street, although uh, um, uh, at, a, at a different address. Um, so they had to move last week. There's been a lot of personnel turnover, which didn't help matters any, including the people who kind of handled stuff. And then they had to 
had to change the uh, uh, the the firm that kind of handles our, our mailing and sending out stuff. I know that there's a term for that, and it just uh, just slipped my mind. Uh, now there have been there ha has also been the change in the uh, the uh, uh, computer systems and the web systems at RASC, although uh, that really it, it may be a pain in the neck for uh, some of the uh, uh, chat groups, but it hasn't uh, it hasn't really been one of the problems affecting the uh, the shipping of stuff, but. Um, uh, but the, uh, the, the, the fact that we, we changed to a, a, new, uh, a, a new firm to ship stuff out, uh, you know, uh, was a problem. And, and there have been some improvements in certain things over last year. There was a couple of really bad situations last year. Um, but uh, now we're up against all these other things like COVID. So, um, and, and so the, uh, the handbooks have been going out, uh, and from a variety of sources in some situations, they, they've used Canada post in others couriers. I got mine, uh, late last week, uh, on a courier. And how many uh, people have it so far? I heard somebody else had theirs, yeah, like one, two, three, four. I think so. Looks like about a th third to a half. Yeah. So they they are coming, um, and uh, um, you know, and 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 I didn't get mine because I'm on the board or anything like that. I I'm sort of in the same tank as everybody else. So the big question, uh, of course, is the. Uh, is the boxes and calendars sent out to centers. And, uh, and so our uh, Phil Groff, I think, had a bit of a come to Jesus meeting today with uh, <laughs> the, um, our shippers about that. So there are 23 of those boxes that have been sent out. Um, seven have been delivered. Nine are supposed to be delivered tomorrow and then other uh but none of the ones that uh have been delivered or are being delivered tomorrow are from british columbia and i think you can guess what the reason is for that um so they're still working on it um uh and uh you know i can't uh, i can't make any promises about when they're going to uh uh, when they're going to arrive, but I, I certainly was happy to see that uh, that the uh, Coquihalla is back open. Um, so that uh, that may uh, that that may help us. Um, you know, it's it's amazing because uh, I didn't expect uh, the uh, the Coquihalla to be open for another month. And uh, so anyway. Um, yeah, and you know, I can't, I can't even guarantee that that the calendar box will show up before Christmas. But anyway, that's kind of the hand we've been dealt, and uh, so that's that's my uh, that's my report. The good, the Thank bad, you, and the ugly, I guess. <laughs> so, Randy, as soon as it arrives on my doorstep, um, I will be just doing deliveries. Right, left, and center. Okay. So I, I'm hoping I don't have huge numbers of meetings or anything this week. So if I if I get it within the next couple of days, that's what I'm going to be doing Thursday and Friday. You're sweet. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be I'll be helping out. So. And Joe, and, you've got your um, your calendars also are. They're all spoken for. I might have one spare, but I'm not saying that officially just yet. But no, they're all spoken for. Yeah. I know I have to come and pick mine up. Well, that's very good. Thank you. Um, so uh, 
I think I would like to now go to Dorothy. Oh, and excuse me, can I mention just one more thing? Please. Uh, certificates. We asked about certificates for uh, uh, people who are expecting, you know, observing certificates. And I think there might be a few here. Uh, that got followed up by our staff problems, but uh, um, uh, Phil told us that uh, that a number of certificates were processed and, and, and sent out uh, today. So those are moving. Do you know if um, there were more certificates um, awarded this year? Because there is such a big yes, uh, I, I think, I effort think, to get the Explore the Moon and Explore the Universe. I think that is the case. This, this, is, this is the biggest year for certificates. That's wonderful. It's not even finished yet, though, the number. Blake yeah. is sending me two to look at this week that I'll rush through so that I can get it as part of this year's tally. Very good. <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're somewhere between 60 and 70. Compared and, to and what's another and, year's. And they aren't all just the Explore the Universe or the Moon. There's been quite a few. There's already three people got their double star one which is just brand new yeah and, and there's more of like the ngc a few people have gotten that one so that's like yeah it's not just all entry level but a lot of entry level which is good how many do you typically get bill oh i don't know I don't, Blake has been re, the new sort of interim, although we've just told him no, you're as our chair. Um, he's real, he's a numbers person. He's been creating graphs that just confuse the heck out of me. <laughs> so, so I haven't, it sort of fluctuates. There's been sort of a real sort of low, but it seems to be picking up. And we think that that might have to do with how it's been heavily promoted and the stuff that uh, Jen has been doing, Jenna has been doing over the yeah. last year and stuff like that of sort of really promoting the idea of doing the lists. So we'll see. We should ask Blake to give us his uh, PowerPoint for the Astro Cafe. Yeah, he has a real interesting one that he did. I can't remember what it's for. He gave it to one of the centers already, I think Sarnia. Good. Um, Ken, 12.502. It seems like I'm serving time or something. But uh, yeah, I've got a terrible internet connection that keeps going out on me, so I hope this works a bit. Uh, I knew nothing at all about astronomy till two years ago. Uh, this month, I was uh, going through YouTube and ran across, uh, across John Dobson's uh, building a Dobsonian telescope. And I mentor a couple of kids, so I thought that would be a very interesting project for him. And then I started to search the internet after that and just went down a gigantic wormhole. And uh, it's been very interesting. And thanks to you guys, I've learned an awful lot along the way. So I thank you for that. Um, I've never shared, so this could be a problem too. And I don't have PowerPoint, but I'll see what I can do. Uh, so you hit screen. You first of all, do share screen. It's a okay. green button. I, I got the one down at the bottom. Yeah. You, okay, so oh, we see okay. you. You see me, so you are sharing screen. So you see the picture? It's beautiful. Looks like Orion. Anybody hear me? I can hear you. Are you there now? Yep. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's this internet connection. So you can see the my screen all right? It's beautiful. 
That's my very first picture. It, I forgot to focus the camera on it, but I, uh, I just love it anyway. Uh, that's the Orion Nebula. Okay. And tell us about the uh, picture. Uh, okay, it's the Orion Nebula. This was taken with uh, ZWO uh, 1600 MC. It was uh, actually taken in, uh, on an ASI Air, the live view. Oh dear. Um, losing his audio. Great picture. Yeah. He's cutting in and out. So. And, uh, <laughs> problem uh, problem with the hotel Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. trying to share, so he's using up his bandwidth sharing his screen. <laughs> Sorry, Ken, we can't get you, we can't hear you now. Are you hearing me now? Uh, now we do. <laughs> okay. It's in and out. Okay. Can, so, can you see the pictures anyway? Beautifully. Okay. Uh, that looks like Andromeda. It is. It is. This was uh, uh, taken my last time out, October the 30th. The Andromeda gal uh, Galaxy, it was 60 uh, two minute uh, subs uh on a 2600 mc and there's no flats no darks in this picture uh, and and this is unfortunate i wonder if uh, it would help uh, if we I wonder if it would help if the rest of us turned our videos off. Maybe it would uh, give us a little bit more bandwidth. Yeah. Well, this is the last picture anyway. Okay. And, Ooh. Uh, Beautiful Pleiades. Looks like you mastered your focus. <laughs> Well, Ken, it's sorry we can't hear your description, but it is such a delight to okay. see them. Yeah, good work, good work. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll I'll let it go with that. I have to thank Martin. I I used his picture. I cropped mine and rotated it to his to, to see what I could pull out of it. So it was a real great help. I got an awful lot more out of the picture than I would have without uh, the help of his his image. So that's all I have. You are doing such an amazing job. And for somebody who's just started, it just blows me away that you're getting that sort of uh, quality. Oh, thank you. It's, uh, it's so rewarding. I yeah. Love, I love it. <laughs> I just watched a video, two friends, one that I watch quite often on, on YouTube, um, did this challenge to photograph the Pleiades. Um, one was in a dark sky somewhere in the States and the other one, and he could only do it in one night. And the other fellow had all the time he wanted, but it was from Tokyo and they compared their pictures. And it was, it was a very good conversation between the two of them. Okay, I only heard a bit of that, Randy. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And when you're back in Victoria, then I'm sure you'll have better bandwidth. <laughs> Dorothy, I have a present for you. Check this I'm out. I'm waiting. How's that? Well, it looks good so far. <laughs> So you, you've heard this several times over. Uh, so this image is of the campsite from 2017 where we hiked up and you get a picture. Here's the camp on the slope west side of, of Eureka Valley and we have a great view across the valley to the east and a great sky to the, 
to the east. Uh, this is tough against the. Uh, you're going to have to advance, Randy. Yep. I think. You tell me when to go next, and I'll, I'll do next. Okay, and I'll try to be coordinated. Uh, so this is from earlier this month, and it just shows how we're the camp is basically nestled against the edge of um, of this west part. The, this picture to the left is taken from somewhere up here, looking down on the camp. This is a, a morning picture, 9 a.m. maybe, nice sun warming us up. Uh, advance, please. This is at three, shortly after three in the afternoon, looking to the east, southeast, as you can see, camp down here at the bottom. Great view of the sky round to the, this is only a part of the view, basically 180 degree uh, field of sky in the direction that's so interesting. It's getting cold now. This is, we've lost the sun at about three and the shadows moved all the way across the valley and we're already putting on thermals ready for the, for the night. So um, next, have to see what comes up. So here's this great sketch. <laughs> great, great sketch. Yes, you should laugh. It's sketched from memory. Um, middle of the night or early morning, really, when the call of nature brought me out of the tent. And I looked up at the sky and stayed mesmerized for a long time looking at our familiar friends I've never thought about being lined up before. So next, Randy, in case you don't recognize Canis Major, off to the south, up on his hind feet, uh, next, Hydra's head reared up on a level with Canis Major, presumably slithering along to the south on, uh, on her or his tummy. Next, please. Leo, oh, right. up, all in, in line, just moving. And finally, next, please, Orisa Major bringing up the rear from a far south to north, parading along. It's hard to describe this, and the, the, the sketch, of course, doesn't show it. But this is these familiar, familiar friends are in a field of so many stars, dark adapted, I figure. And I don't have the greatest night vision, but I could, certainly was able to see um, 6.5 mag, maybe maybe even a little better stars, because I'd had no seen no light for hours and hours. We used dim red light and had been in the tent for a while. To give you a better idea and describe farther next, please, I inverted that and tried to put it in a in a field, this, these, it was like being in a, a theater in the front row. It's mm -hmm. a very dynamic scene. The, the actors moving towards the south, looking as though they were having a great time with all their heads pointed up in the, straight up in the air. That was one thing that was so striking. They, they seem to be just behind the mountains here, which are actually a black, like a black cutout on the stage of a theater. And the, 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 the sand and the scrub and the, of the valley were kind of dimly lit by all the starlight. Fantastic view. And as I say, just beyond description, I'll never forget it. Uh, and, it was so dynamic, so much fun looking at it that for four nights I stood out there and shivered and shivered with my sleeping bag in the tent, not calling me back because it was it was such a captivating, really uh, mesmerizing, entrancing view that I had to kind of just for my notebook make that simple sketch, but I don't didn't really need it. Of course, by the time I, I'd finished watching this and realizing if I didn't head back to the tent, I wasn't I was going to be frozen stiff. <laughs> the temperature went down to, to minus four, minus five one night. We hadn't expected this cold actually. 
and we used to weather that without problem, but um, no more. <laughs> um, next, please. So next morning, while warming up at about maybe nine, oh, next, please while drinking coffee by the truck, Ms. Miles took this picture maybe 9, 30, 10, and it was starting to get warm in the sun, starting to get warm, we're still wearing heavy clothes, but I was looking out at the sky that you just saw in the previous um, image, uh, dreaming of the critters that were moving across in there their charming, sedate fashion the night before. That's it. Next, Randy. Dorothy, you delight me. That was so well described, and I totally well, I wish I never it. expected to have any kind of a reasonable <laughs> sky experience this, this year, to tell you the truth. And I didn't point out actually um, that we had my telescope. Uh, is, I don't know if anyone's interested going just back to the last image or, or the first image that my telescope under its wraps in the back of the back of the truck. We had just the one telescope did some observing, but it got so unexpectedly cold. And although we had all our warm stuff, we packed it in early and as it turned out the trip was as long as we expected because of taking longer driving down coming back and waiting to get the rapid PCR results in Portland before we could fill out the arrive can form and get back home and then the power went out for two days and so we kept on camping in the house so our good trip our power went out yeah Thank you so much. You really did describe that beautifully, very evocative. Brian, you say you have some uh, some pictures for us. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, like Ken, I'm a newbie here. Um, Accomplished got newbies. Yeah, well, just got a telescope. I haven't mastered the photography that he did, but I, I did have a few images that I took last night and I tried stacking them using the software that David Lee introduced me to. And, um, and so I'll share my screen and um, show you the first cut. Uh, okay, so you can see my screen with a image of uh, a moon. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I'll go through these. So first of all, I, yeah, so I took these images. I took a series of seven and I used my pixel camera attached to this, uh, oh, I should turn this thing up, next, next YZ device. And so the camera is just a pixel camera. So this device here allows me to center the, the, um, the camera of the phone directly over the eyepiece. So it steadies it um, somewhat. And um, so I took a, a series of photos that looked like this. And then I used this um, PIP software um, to center and uh, I guess size the images similarly. And then I used uh, Auto Stacker to stack them. And it, I had to, it was not that intuitive, I had to do a little bit of reading to figure out I needed to um, select some alignment points on the images and figure out how to drop the photos in here. Anyway, it's pretty rudimentary. So the, the photos turns, so I'm showing you this photo here. And then after it was um, um, pipped, it looked like this. And then um, I'm not sure that we're. Oh, you're not. Okay, I've got to share my screen. You have to share the screen, not the uh, not the yeah. picture. Right. Okay. Why don't you get out and then back in? Well, I'll try this. I just did that work. 
Okay, so now we see two, two right. copies. Okay, so maybe you didn't see the uh, software before, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so here was the auto stacker. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, yeah. And then, and so drop pictures in here, selected some alignment points. I recommend use the, the C's for the moon. And then I get this, um, I get this image, sorry, this was the, the PIP image. And then after it's been, they were stacked, then I got this image. And uh, so I'll just drag that over so you can see that side by side with the PIP image. So that's not too bad, I thought, but um, it's still a little short of um, the, um, you know, the really good NASA photo like this one. But it's getting, you know, it's, it's so it's the first, it's first shot at it. And um, doing this in the interest of trying to complete my Explore the Moon um, certificate, but I don't think I'll get it done by the end of the new year if we don't have another clear night, Bill. <laughs> How are you doing with Explore the Moon? Well, I've just uh, got 10 more images. And I was just going through that and highlighting the ones I've got to get uh, that I either missed or I didn't record. So yeah, um, and I'll be able to pick up a few more tonight if the moon's still out. Like, uh, Excellent. Namely, namely Cook and uh, on the far side here that, um, and uh, a couple of craters up in this direction here, New, um, Newcomb and and uh, macrobius, macrobius. Yeah. So, anyway, it's been fun. It's, it's, uh, these programs are are a good way to remain focused and give purpose. Yeah. So, thanks That's for great. the help. Thanks for the help in getting on the beginners uh, special interest group and and David Lee's leadership in that. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, Michelle, way off in Quebec. Tell us about life under the uh, cold skies of Quebec. Pretty good. Uh, if you have 10 minutes, I can make a quick presentation of my observatory if you want. Oh, yes. Okay, so I will share. Just a second, I will open the, uh, open the PowerPoint first, so it will be faster. Give me just a second. It's opening and I will share after that. Everybody see that? It's working. Okay, I'm gonna go on. From beginning. All right, so uh, just to let you know first, uh, I did make a quick presentation in French at the uh, club in Mimouski, so that's why uh, there's a couple things in French, so. Uh, yeah, so I call my observatory MCG. So if everybody want to know what, uh, I have no clue how to name my observatory. So I did find out that the double star uh, uh, gave me uh, the MCG code for my double star uh, discovery. So I decided to name it MCG. So, <laughs> so uh, just to make it quick. So uh, I started on the 26th of July after to find out that no contractor was willing to uh, to basically go in that project. So I had to start every, everything on my own. So uh, here starting, so 10 feet by about 14 feet. So that is the size of the uh, observatory. Uh, for sure, I had to make 
to put the sono tube uh, to make sure the sono tube doesn't touch the, the the floor. So when I walk and close the door, you know the the scope's still pretty solid. So I had to dig six feet because I'm in Quebec and everything freeze. So it took me about 15 minutes to get to about four feet. It was pretty nice. And after that, I did uh, hit some rock. So it took me an extra two, three hours to finish it to six feet. So uh, here, all the rock that I had to break. So wow. interesting. So that is the center two with the base. Uh, that is the center two again. So uh, by the way, that is fun to drive those things, the, those small uh, machines. So I did uh, this one, my own, uh, my, uh, my my backyard. So the, the, the grass is all destroyed because I didn't know how to drive that thing. So when you turn, it basically destroyed everything. So it was pretty fun. <laughs> so here, uh, pretty much everything done with the, con uh, with be ready to put the, the concrete in. So uh, that line here, that is where is the north. So I had to make sure that uh, when I put uh, the concrete, I put the uh, the screw at, at the right place to make sure that when I put the uh, the pier, that it basically aligned to the north. Big story about that. Uh, here, I decided to put that. Uh, you can see the PVC tubing to make sure that uh, I don't walk uh, across cables. So uh, I find it pretty interesting. Uh, also, there's uh, I put uh, uh, another piece, uh, the, the black piece here, between the center tube and the concrete to make sure that there's a gap and I fill it with the uh, foam. So, uh, so that is basically the first part done. So the concrete, so that was pretty easy if I can say. That is basically what I did put on the top uh, of, of the pier to make sure that everything is holding. And I put a sign here, I said, the north go right there. So that is what I did. That was my first mistake because by the book, it was supposed to be the north supposed to be this way. <laughs> I had to recall uh, a company that they did the pier uh, to make sure that the top plate was basically to move 45 degrees to make sure that it fit. So I did receive it and everything fit properly. So, but. It cost me probably a couple of dollars extra because the top plate was already there. So they had to remove it and put the new plate in. Uh, that is basically concrete with the, with the bowl ready to receive the walls because I built every, everything in my garage. So because I was alone to build everything. So I was building the wall in the garage, the truss in the garage, and I was moving the stuff in. So, uh, you can see here, there's no way I could move a wall 14 feet long. So I did cut it in half. So I had two walls of uh, 10 feet by six feet. And I had four walls of about seven feet by six feet. So I, that, that was easy, easier. And they were all going in pretty easy. The hole was all ready made. So uh, that was pretty easy. So by the way, uh, the people that know the VCO, you will see that looks pretty close. So uh, just showing that I, I put some uh, hurricane plate to make sure that nothing moves. <laughs> so uh, here, the progress with the, with pretty much starting to see everything go together, even with, but not the track, but at least the four, the four by four. You can see that the, the, the pier is not centered is because uh, that is the observatory, and that section here is the art room. So I have two rooms. Uh, one thing I did is before to put uh, the four by four, I made sure that uh, I could adjust it in case that, uh, you know, with the freeze and on freeze, you know, the winter. So if basically everything moves, well, at least I can ad adjust the level. So every year I need just to make sure that everything is straight. 
uh, that is starting to have the, the roof on. We see the tracks already in. Uh, that was pretty interesting to put. So, uh, you know, when you're working alone, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's, uh, make sure everything was straight. We can, uh, that is the first thing I did. I had a four by four, 14 feet long. I find out that uh, after putting the wheels, that it was not even straight. So the roof was not going to move at all. So I said, all right. So I went back to try to find a four by four, 16 feet long, uh, straight. I could not find any. So uh, what I did, I took, I bought uh, two uh, four by four, uh, eight feet long, cut it in half, uh, and basically uh, put everything together. So. I, I use a special glue to make sure that everything holds together. And I put also 10 uh, structural screw to make sure that everything's gonna be holding. And right now it's fine. Nothing is moving. So uh, that is the roof starting to go in. Uh, some... How heavy is that roof? Huh? How heavy is that roof? Uh, overall, the roof is probably about 800 pounds. So how do you uh, move it? With one finger. Wow. I it, has, it, with... it has to be a lot stronger than our roofs here on the West Coast. It's got to take a snow load. <laughs> well, that's why I put it a bit... Uh, I, I did talk to uh, Bruno a couple of times, and... Uh, yeah, I had to put it a bit more heavier and more solid than the VCO because of the snow in Quebec. But uh, I did, I had a small uh, a way to weight everything that was going to the roof and I weighed everything, keep a record of that. And at the end, it's about 800 pounds. So it's pretty heavy. But right now, and I had a couple nights of about minus 22, minus 23. And uh, uh, even with the cold, one finger, everything is moving. So I'm pretty happy for now. Uh, we'll see uh, this summer if, if everything's still straight after a uh, full year. Uh, I did put tie back anyway, so just to make sure that everything is done properly. Uh, always trying to find a way to close everything, make sure the snow doesn't go in, so that's pretty, I did basically succeed pretty good. So uh, right now there's no snow going in, there's no rain, so it's pretty it's pretty tight. So that is almost pretty much done. One part I had to do is that hand here, so the roof moved this way. So that hand here, the rain was basically moving down and going through the seal and go in. So I had to put uh, something to recover the rain and to put it down. So, but it works pretty fine. So that is the electricity going in, uh, the door. That was pretty interesting. I put the door on the 9th of November. I did order the door uh, on the 1st of July. So it took a long time to get that door because it was a special door. You know, all the doors are about 80, 80, 81 inch high. This one is 68, so I had to basically uh, get a special door just for this one. And uh, yeah, it took a long time to get it. But anyway, I have my door, so I'm pretty happy. So when you open the door, that is what you see. So uh, you see the observatory, so small table at the end there, uh, all the electrical power. I got two lights, I got like the DCO, the red one in the bottom, the white one on top. Uh, I have a windows here to see what's going on in the observatory when I'm basically here. Uh, that is basically the position. That is so I put guard. So I find out pretty quick that uh, you know when it rained during the winter, ice built pretty uh, good. So uh, to prevent ice build up on the rail, I I, I bought some pretty thin wood. And uh, I did build those uh, cases. So they just go over. So I don't have any uh, problem with ice and snow that built in the rail. So I need just to remove it, take about 30 seconds to remove the, 
the regard and everything is clear. So I can roll the uh, roll the, the whole thing. Yeah, I was uh, going to ask you about that because I guess the alternative would be to heat the rails, but just yeah, throwing was, a cover would be is more effective. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I'm going to try it uh, probably next year or in the next couple of years, see if it works. Uh, I have to check uh, how many hands that's going to use because I did run a cable for 2D amps from the house to the observatory. So 2D amps is still good. I almost regret, you know, maybe I should have put 40 amps, but 2D amps is probably good enough. Uh, I have a push button here. That is for the power going to the observatory for the mount. So if I see the mount going crazy and the telescope going to hit somewhere that I don't want, and you know, when you're panicked, but you know, sometimes it's hard, you know, you don't react pretty quick. So I push a panic uh, button. So something go wrong, I push that, everything shut down. That's uh, an essential button. Exactly. So that is basically uh, the middle pier that was modified for the 45 degrees here. So it's in, so no problem. That is basically the power, so originally I had the power coming in here to that light, that light, and going to the power. I find out I didn't have enough, uh, the tubing was not big enough, so I had to add the second line there <laughs> because I had our time to run the cable through. So, and that is basically all the cable for the uh, control that is on the bottom here. Uh, I got like, the power, like the power here and the control right there. So that is, I, I did find a way to make some room to store stuff. You know, I didn't want to add more uh, stuff in the observatory. So I just make uh, my own uh, storage room by using two, uh, using plywood. It works fine. Uh, the equipment, uh, Paramount, I got an email today from uh, Paramount. So basically it's complete. Uh, is on the bench right now, so uh, I should get it sometime. I would say in January, sometime when uh, they're done doing the uh, test. Uh, Celestron, I asked for an update. The last update I got, my Celestron is stuck in China somewhere on a jetty, waiting for a cargo to uh, bring it to uh, the United States. How long is going to take? Uh, right now, they said between March and probably summer so uh yeah so that is the second scope uh, i already have this one in i'm using right now my 66 so that is the first light if i guess if i can say from uh, the observatory but not with the new scope so uh the play uh so m42 with the running man uh, I already start to do some photometry, so I already did that. And next one, lesson learned. So I did say I'm going to try to learn how to find asteroid basically in images. So I said, oh, well, to test the uh, IRIS software and it's called Astrometrica, I said, I'm going to basically just use a uh, couple frame I had from a couple nights ago, see if I basically can find one. So I did find one. So if I run it, so that is basically a DSLR. So the field of view is pretty big. So you won't see a lot of movement, but if you look at that star there, uh, I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll try. You can see there's a small movement right there. So, so what I did, I did use astrometrical and astron astronomic astrometry.net to find the position. I went to the uh, the website called the small, it's called a minor planet. So they're the one basically dealing with that set. So, oh, I'm going to try to identify which one it is. But I find out that mm, it was not in there. So I said, oh, so, I said, all right. So if it's not there, that means it was basically looks like was a new discovery. There's a lot of new discovery. I looked, there's about between 15 and 25 new asteroids discovered every night. So, uh, and mostly by amateur astronomer. It's like, so uh, fortunately, 
I didn't took enough image, so I could not basically uh, find a, a preliminary orbit of this one, so I was not able to relocate it. So uh, this one is lost. <laughs> But uh, that is fun. So uh, next time, you know, is lesson learned. So it's always at that. So after that, whoa, how I stop that? All right. So basically, that what it looks like when it's open. So uh, that's it. There's any question about my observatory? Are you going to do your Pleiades project more? Yes, but unfortunately, the only thing I have right now is a 66 millimeters uh, refractor scope. I have uh, also a six inch uh, meat scope that uh, I probably can use, but probably won't be good enough for, for the ladies. So uh, I'm going to have to uh, pass for this year for the ladies and we start next year when uh, when uh, when I got my uh, 14 inch, because without the 14 inch, uh, you know, uh, to do double star that they're really tight, uh, you need to be, you need a big scope. So uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, what I got right now is not good enough. So uh, so that's going to be for next year. Michelle, what are you using for a mount since you're waiting for the paramount? So right now, what I got, I'm using my old mount. So it's a, a old uh, Mead LXD 55. Okay. Yeah. So uh, so the scope, the six inch scope, come with 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 it. So I got the six inch scope that go on it. But most of the time, I use mostly uh, my Williams Optic 66, and uh, it's fine. You know, uh, it's fine to do fun stuff. So you have an uh, observatory in your backyard. You can. Uh observe pretty well anytime there's clear sky. It's an envious it position to be in. <laughs> it is, and in Quebec, you know, okay, it's cold, you know, but uh, it's cold, but there's probably most clear nights during the winter than the summer. So it's pretty spread. So uh, so I will have a lot, a lot of clear uh, night during the winter. The only thing is cold, so... Uh, but I heard that the paramount works pretty well uh, in cold weather. So uh, uh, my mean mount doesn't work well. So it was minus 18.5 a couple of days ago. And after two hours, uh, yeah, uh, I was starting to have some issue for uh, tracking. So uh, have you have, have you have you done the famous replacement of the of the grease in the mount? Yeah, so I did remove it and I put some uh, I put some uh, lithium some grease for uh, yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah but uh, it's better but uh, at minus uh, eighteen uh, scope yeah really <laughs> I think the problem was not the mount I think the problem was probably more the battery pack could be. So if the battery is really cold, probably I have not enough power to basically to run it properly. So I'm not too sure. I will have to check it uh, next time. So uh... good job, good job, Michelle. Looks good. Came, Michelle, together, came together very quickly. Huh? Michelle hey, Rich, here. I, I congratulations. Uh, I really made my day to see this project. Thanks for sharing. Uh, my question is, what are the skies like? Is it quite dark in your area? So, so I would say that it's darker than the VCO. So I have a so I have neighbor basically on each side and the back, but the back mostly on the side. But uh, they don't put any light, so it's really dark. And after that, it just filled. Uh, um, I'm not sure what kind of feel, but you know, it's just clear. So I have a really good, I would say, east, south. The west, I'm losing a bit on the west, but the west is where I have a small uh, dome, uh, light dome from the city of Rimouski. It's not a big town, but it's about 55,000. So, uh, and I'm probably 10 click from Rimouski. Though. So there's a small dome, so it's on the west side. So I'm losing a bit of the west side. 
And the north is okay. So uh, the north, I had to go over my house. So I probably lose about, I would say, 20 degrees uh, altitude uh, on the north. So uh, above 20, 25 degrees is all clear. But the east and the south is really uh, clear, really nice. So uh, from your coordinates, it looks like you're almost at the same latitude that Victoria is. I'm a bit higher than Victoria. I'm 48, and Victoria is what? 48, 48 uh, uh, and a half. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty, uh, yeah, okay. But the weather is not the same. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, just to let you know, by the way, Quebec is uh, back uh, pretty much uh, uh, full uh, tough confirmation for, uh, for the COVID. So restaurant, uh, but the, the restaurant are kind of open, but Everything else is all closed. The school they're closed. Everything closed. So they did happen at uh, seventeen hundred today, and they're expecting probably to go uh, fully closed tomorrow. It's like everything shut down. So we had about five thousand cases uh, yesterday, and they're expecting about seven thousand for today. So uh, they're looking for closing everything. So it's not good for uh, Christmas. Oh boy. So I don't know how it is in BC, but uh, in Quebec's not good. Uh, I heard Ontario's not good. So we're about a week behind you. Because it's been a long time too. Well, thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much. We've been wondering. And it's really exciting seeing, I mean, all by yourself too. It's it's so impressive. But I had one guy coming in to help me to put the truss because uh, putting the truss on top is kind of hard to do that alone but uh, i had somebody to help me for the truss i had one friend also to help me to uh put the roof uh, uh on top too so uh but most of the stuff i would say 90 percent i did it alone so but you know, I did watch a lot of video, video uh, on uh, YouTube and um, I bet. yeah, because I did build something when I was 13 years old and uh, it was a small house, you know, uh, it did last about a week and everything collapsed. <laughs> so I was kind of afraid. I said, I hope that uh, something like that's not going to happen again. So I did learn a lot. So. Uh, I did talk to Bruno a couple times, so uh, because you can see that the construction is really similar to the DCO. Yeah. Gary, are you in much of planning mode for your uh, moving your equipment? Well, as a matter of fact, that's a very good question. I just finished disassembling the 25 inch, which weighs about 800 pounds, and I'm going to do a presentation later maybe in a week or two because it's it's quite fascinating how you can take such a big scope apart with with one person it's a bit scary but it's interesting and finding mice in your telescope that doesn't help so i'll show you about that too <laughs> and what yes. is your uh, time frame so uh it turns out that bca has really pulled a fast one on us we used to um be able to renew our medical insurance while we're down here and they just informed me that we no longer could do that so our medical insurance uh, expires on january 20th and we are going to be on the coho ferry from port angeles on january 19th or earlier oh this is a short winter for you yeah as a matter of fact i had the scope going tonight and it was lousy seeing so just don't feel bad that you don't have dark skies as as i do down here because the seeing here has been atrocious for the last couple of weeks so pretty disappointing to tell you the truth um, but however i'm looking forward to getting both scopes up there i have a location for the new observ observatory and i'll be uh, probably following in michelle's footsteps and uh making something very, very similar for that. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to being home all year because believe it or not, when you're stuck down here, although it's lovely and warm, you do get disconnected from all you guys. So it's actually it's actually kind of fun being able to connect with you guys while I'm still down here. So there you go. Back, uh, back around January, 
you know, around the 20th and away we go. Well, that was a very sweet mention to us. <laughs> we sure like you having you around here too. So yeah, thanks. When, when you get back and uh, settled in, Gary, uh, we'll have you over for scotch. <laughs> well, scotch sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we are well over an hour. I'm having a good time, but um, are there other people who would like to talk about 2021? Achievements, hopes, uh, thoughts? I could do a quick one, but I'll let Nathan go first. Okay, Nathan. Okay, uh, 2021 was, I guess uh, at the start of 2021, I didn't really know what to expect. It's definitely felt longer than 2020. Um, Nerd Anomaly started this year. Um, it's hard to believe that it was all just condensed into half of this year because it felt like a lot longer than that. Um, and in that time, I have started the Instagram and a website, which I'm pretty pleased with. I also took up um, an art class at school and I decided to practice um, astronomy sketches uh, like Randy did and we did a uh, cross hatching so I decided to take one of my lunar photos and cross hatch it and I have it here um, this is one of them oh oh I'm going to uh, pin you big if we can let's if I do it does it to do it for everybody a spotlight for everybody just, there we go it, there you go yeah oh wow so wait, was that done from the eyepiece? Uh, no, that, this was from a, a picture I'd taken of the moon. Okay, because boy, oh boy. That's one of the big problems is I do my sketch from the eyepiece, but it means you don't do any of that beautiful shading things that some people do. Sorry if there's a bit of backlighting here. Um, here this is uh one on the other side oh that's fantastic that's beautiful i see you're taking advantage of uh cross hatching yeah nice. um, i really like that style can you put those on zenfolio so we can all uh, see them with a bit better resolution uh sure i don't have a account for that um or oh, we can, can get you, we can get you we, we can get you set up Nathan no, that's okay. not a problem just contact Joe okay that's uh, and then also, beyond Zenfolio oh thank you also in 2021 uh, I, I took up um, just kind of public outreach for astronomy as a nice memory of those Saturday night star parties I just occasionally set up outside on the sidewalk and showed people the nice sky, which was a uh, kind of just a nice um, way to recreate those Saturday night star parties. Hopefully uh, 2022, those will start again. We thought we were there. <laughs> Good for All you, right. Nathan, sticking your scope up on this on the sidewalk, at a boy. What I found is that um, our sunspot triangle is a magnet for people. When I'm just on a sunny day on my porch with that, anybody walks by has to see what it is. Yeah. The sidewalk's uh, anyway. better than a predetermined place because you catch the people that don't know what they're looking for. Like the people that go up to the center of the universe, they're specifically going there. But if you just like guerrilla astronomy people, <laughs> they're like, wow, I've never seen that. I didn't know you could see that, right? And they're, they're the ones that may then go up to the center of the universe. Are you doing any, Bill? With COVID and all? Well, I do the, um, with my solar scope. I haven't in a while because I haven't been out much lately. I've been just roaming the woods around here. It's still mushroom season. 
before I moved here from Edmonton, I used to put the scope out on the driveway on Halloween and grab every little gremlin went by and let them have a, a treat for their eyes. <laughs> it was great fun. That's good. We don't get kids here <laughs> where we live. Uh, well, that's, I think that's it for me, uh, if anyone else wants to go. Well, I invite David. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I, I gave this a bit of a thought uh, this afternoon, Randy. I, I tried to do a bit of a mental retrospective, but I, I think I have to admit that uh, my, my time uh, for this last year has really been filled with uh, kind of pivoting to maintain community. That's the first thing. Yes, and then, you've been wonderful and, at that. Yeah, and then uh, just some personal study on my part. So uh, from the point of view of community, uh, uh, I love the way the things have been moving with the SIGs. That's It's been a great way of keeping us connected. Um, also, I had the opportunity to work on the National RASC NOVA program. So that's kind of like a beginner's program. So I, I spent um, a bit of time working on, I think, astrophotography, light pollution. Um, there was a couple of the introductory observing uh, finder kind of things and, uh, uh, and space exploration, actually. So they were all kind of good things to do. Um, they uh, took up different times during, during the period of time, but it was uh, a lot of fun to do that. Um, the other thing uh, I've been doing is working with the technical team on the, the VCO. So we've uh, been kind of working hard to bring things um, back together again so that we're ready to open at the nearest opportunity. So th those are the main things that, oh, and I, I don't want to forget um, the role that uh, many of us have played uh, with our collaboration with the FDAO. So this year has been great. Uh, we managed to do a collaboration with uh, the University of Victoria open house people. And I've had just an amazing group of people come and visit the EAA sessions on uh, FDAO Saturday nights. Uh, big, big shout out to uh, David Payne and to, to Brock and the occasional, and Dan Posey, and the occasional uh, visits by, uh, by uh, Mike Nash. So uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Now, personal study point of view, um, I decided to do something different. Um, I was trying to fill out my astronomy knowledge. So this year, I decided I would do variable star observing. So I joined the AAA VSO and I managed to complete three certificates this year. I completed the visual observing variable star certificate and the two that are associated with CCD photometry. So yeah, great stuff. I, I'm always wanting to sort of fill in the gaps. I, I have tons of gaps to fill in in terms of astronomy, but uh, I, I, love, I love the exploration aspect of it. So that was my year. Oh, that was a very good report. And you re the making community is something that we really, really do appreciate. And anybody who hasn't tried at least one of the SIGs, it, they, it's just a wonderful, smaller community to, to, to work with. And it's, it's great. David, uh, David uh, Dorothy, David, I'd just like to thank you again for bringing up that uh, sketching course from Australia mm -hmm. early in the year. Yes. I haven't had a chance to practice as much as I want, but I learned a lot and it applies. And, and Nathan, it applies to any or anyone trying to sketch anything. The basic techniques are the same and learning not to make exactly straight lines, but curved lines, <laughs> how to do shading, when to do cross hatching, tips like that, starting at a very basic level. And I found the Australian instructors were very good and very engaging. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that, and, that's and an amazing- People to do those kinds oh, of Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's an amazing EDX course. And I, I was gonna just, before I finish here, I just wanted to say, Randy, uh, uh, I've been really inspired by you and the other sketchers here in the Victoria, uh, so much so that I, I've tried to uh, kind of resurrect my uh, art skills. So I, I have been busy kind of learning things like cross hatching and stippling and things like that. And I discovered my, uh, my little watercolor set, my little plein air watercolor set. So I'm actually planning to do uh, 
maybe some lunar stuff with uh, ink washes. And I thought that would be a, a really cool thing to do. So you might see some of those things in the next coming months. There's an interesting quote from a, a biologist who, who was developed um, microscopy and was a, a leader, Amazia, but he said, uh, we see with our mind, we look with our eyes. Yes. So, and it takes some thinking about, but I think that's the basics for sketching anything and certainly for astronomy sketching. Yeah, absolutely. And photography, really, looking. Well, for the visual astronomers, you know, when I started and I was thinking it's all about magnification, you got to make things big in order to see them. Um, whereas what I'm realizing now is that if you spend enough time, even if something is very small in your eyepiece, if you start really concentrating on that small bit of, well, for me, the moon, um, you start seeing things that weren't there before. And I'm just wondering if other visual observers are, are noticing that uh, it's just as important to uh, you know, spend the time than just worrying about magnification, which is often not going to help you see better resolution. Well, I think that's absolutely true, Randy, because uh, as with anything, as we become more familiar with something, there's an intimacy there that can never be replaced. So when, when you have been observing and seeing these things so many times, you start to see, automatically you see these things that originally you may have overlooked. That's, That's so true of looking at very faint deep sky objects, which it's amazing. And, and, and uh, Randy, this is a case where one magnification definitely doesn't help. A big, big mirror helps gather as much light as possible but just looking 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 it's amazing what you can see i think bell I, could I, agree with that yeah i use that a lot in public outreach a lot of the time when you when you have a lineup of people at your scope for public outreach uh people just take a quick look and go away and i really mm -hmm. encourage them to take their time spend five or ten minutes with the scope uh, and and take deep breaths and and look and it really does make a difference to them because your eye your brain interprets more than what you see with your your bare eye it, it just it's very very positive if you can get people to spend a little more time than just a quick peek yeah you need you need to give enough time for the software to kick in <laughs> Larry. Uh, yes, I was just going to say I would like to dub David Lee as Renaissance Man of the Year. Because he's involved in so many different kinds of things this year. It was just totally amazing. Um, so I just, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Second from here. Well, um, I wish everybody a very happy new year. Uh, it's certainly, this is my first year as president. Let me say very firmly to you, this organization does need a new secretary and a new uh, vice president. Um, it's, it's worth it. You know, we, we you get to work with wonderful people and uh, it, it's, I would not say it's an overly onerous organization. I can't stress enough that the nasty thing in volunteer organizations is fundraising. And we don't have that problem. We have 200 and some members who pay their dues. And so that means that we are able to do all our programs without having to beg for money. So it's just about, um, getting the things done. And I, I can't say how much I appreciate the volunteerism that that we see in this in this uh, group. Um, but we need a secretary, we need a vice president. And uh, I really want you to to um, consider stepping up.
but with that, I think we can say Happy New Year. We'll see you not next Monday between uh, Christmas and New Year's and not even the one, I guess that's the third. It's right. still a stat holiday. So our next meeting will be January 10th. In the massive year 2022, who thought it? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Thanks to Joe for uh, doing the uh, YouTube transcript. Uh, this was my first time hosting uh, the Astro Cafe, and uh, Chris certainly has been doing an amazing job all year. So thank you so much for that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you and all your wonderful astronomy presents that you're all going to get. <laughs> Thank Good you. night. Thank you, Randy. Well, thanks for hosting tonight, Randy. So, good night, everybody. Good night. Merry Christmas. Good night. And happy New Year. Yeah.